Hi, everybody. It's Dan Cerucci. It's, I, we didn't, I didn't realize when I scheduled this broadcast with Joe Kondo, the amazing Joe Kondo, I'm so happy to have him back, that this was going to be New Hampshire primary election night, and the polls are closing um, just as we, as we are speaking. So first thing I'm going to do, Joe, is I want to go and check and make sure that we are one live on Facebook and Twitter. Sure. And I want to put, make sure that my live feed on Facebook is, um, is, um, is going out publicly to without any, let's see, I'm just checking now to see that we're on Facebook. It said they were having a problem getting me on Facebook. Let's see again. This can sometimes be a little tricky. I'll trust you with all the technical stuff, Dan. <laughs> well, good. I'm, I'm That's what I can do for here. That's what I can do for here. Facebook. Okay, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. We're having trouble playing this video, it says. All right, let me go over to Twitter. Let me go over to Twitter and see what's going on there. It may take a few moments to come through. Um, Twitter now known as X. Right. And there we are. We are on Twitter. I'm just a little concerned about the Facebook feed. Let me check again. I don't know why this is a problem. <clears throat> Let me, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove something. I'm going to remove something that was on here and that may, um, that may make this easier. Now let's see. Well, we'll have to hope that it comes on Facebook. We are live on Twitter. This is Dan Cerucci. I'm with Joe Kondo. This is also going to be, it's also on my YouTube channel. And it's also um, going to be on my blog at dancerucci.com. So let's see one more time. I don't know why it's not coming through on Facebook, but we'll just have to proceed. And I will. what I will do is I will pick it up and I will put it on Facebook later. But anyway, Joe, it's great to have you back here. Great to be back, Dan. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate you were, it. I always point this out that Joe was the last elected Republican, one of the last elected, one of the last Republicans to be elected here in Camden County, New Jersey. That is We're not correct. going to say how long ago it was, Joe. <laughs> you were like a teenager, weren't you? When you were, I like wasn't, wasn't quite a teenager, but I was. Uh, I was twenty six, I think. When I twenty, no, well, twenty seven when I got elected. Twenty seven. You were one of the youngest people ever to be elected a county freeholder. One of the youngest to be the freeholder director. I think I was. Pro I think I was the youngest Republican ever to be freeholder director. If, if you George became freeholder director. Yes, I was. Yeah, I'm, I actually am the last Republican freeholder director in Camden County history, and I, I always used to tell people that you know that was a, a distinction that I did not want to take to my grave, uh, <clears throat> with the hope that there would be another Republican freeholder director in Camden County before I I, I, I go on to the great beyond. But now that they've changed the name from freeholder to commissioner, I'm now a uh, an answer to a trivial pursuit question. I will forever and anon be the last Republican freeholder director. In in Camden County history. <laughs> because the, the, the county is so solidly Democrat and 
I don't know. I mean, you have to sympathize and empathize with the Republicans in Camden County. I mean, they do try very hard, but they're in such an out, they're so outspent and outmaneuvered. It's right. it's really right. It's really, right. I, I stay in, in frequent contact with Republican Chairman Tom Crone, and he he knows exactly what the Republicans are up against in Camden County. And I, I take a page out of our, our our book from the early '80s. I mean, Camden County was flipped in the early '80s. The mid it wasn't flipped till the late '80s, but all that work started in the early '80s. And you know, uh, a shout out to my good friend Senator Mike Testa. He often says that the uh, the overnight success in Cumberland County. I mean, as everybody knows, we flipped Cumberland County uh, last year, and and now it's seven zero Republican on the board of commissioners in Cumberland County. And I remember back when I was freeholder. <clears throat> excuse me. Even even when we had flipped Camden County, we hadn't flipped Cumberland County. So uh, this idea that we can't flip Cumberland or Camden or Gloucester is is, is just so much nonsense. It, it, it and takes- you Joe, are a great believer in organization and in grassroots organization. You you couldn't you took the words out of my mouth, Dan, because it, it 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 is when one is committed to growing the grassroots organizations in these counties that we'll start to see some success on the municipal level, and then success on the municipal level leads to success on the county level. And as Senator Testa always says, our overnight success was ten years in the making. That uh, was the same thing in Camden County. It was the early '80s. George Geist, Michael DePiro, others got together and said, "We need to start making some changes." Everybody wants to talk about our election in 1990 when we we, we took control of Camden County, but nobody wants to talk about the election in 1984 when it was 7-0 Democrat and the Republicans were thought to not have a chance um, and got slaughtered in in 1984. Um, so <clears throat> 1985 everything changed it was just enough to get republicans elected and everything went away you know every, everything grew from there so chipping away at the wall i mean i i always you know, one must recognize how how hard and how rare it is to flip a county to sustainably flip a county right we had control for one year out of the past 50 uh in, in, in camden county that's not what i would call a sustainable flip uh, Cumberland's had singular years of control <clears throat> over the past 40 or 50 years. This is the first time now they'll have three solid years of control. And frankly, I think Republicans will control Cumberland County forever now. <clears throat> but to, to flip a county is really a rare event, and it's really hard to do. And I liken it to, 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 to taking over a city. I always have these medieval era sort of uh, war stories in my head. Uh, but you have to chip away and chip away and chip away at the wall till you finally get enough people over the wall that you can invade the city. And and, and at the risk of sounding a little too dramatic, that's really what we're, what we're doing. And in Camden County, it's the same thing. They'll chip away at town after town after town. But there's a, a, a different issue right now that's impeding our ability to build organizations. There's no secret that the party is at war with itself in all of West Jersey right now. And if some cooler heads don't prevail and some leaders of the party get these disagreeing factions at the table, the Democrats are just laughing, just laughing at us. Well, uh, you it, it, it's so unfortunate. We see this again and again, Joe. Uh, both of us have been active in the Republican Party for quite some time. And it's so frustrating where Democrats seem so well organized and so united and Republicans keep fighting amongst themselves. And at the last uh, Jesse Kurt breakfast down in Atlantic City and our dear friend, Jesse Kurt. Yeah, I was, I unfortunately wasn't Kurt's. able to make that, but that's a great event every year. And Jesse, of course, is just a great guy. So yeah, Kurt's, Kurt's, yeah Kurt's. Kurt's got reelected uh, again this year and he deserves it. He earned it. So. And marvelous now, and here and here's an example of a Republican who keeps winning in a Democrat, solidly Democrat town, Jesse Kurtz. 100%. And what I said to the Republicans at the last breakfast was, if you keep fighting over this, the only thing you're fighting about is who gets the right to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine right. the stupidity, the folly over fight, fighting about who gets the right to lose. Everybody fighting to be king and nothing. 
And and I, 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 again, another Mike Testaism is you're fighting over crumbs. All, all, all you get, even if you win, is is, is crumbs. And and so yeah, it, it's it's a difficult. And I I could speak for hours and hours and hours on the 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 the, the, the problems that result from the way our party is organized. And because of the poor organization of the party, you can't build a functional organization. It's dysfunctional to its core. It's set up completely around, you mentioned the Republicans in, in, in Camden County and how they're working so hard and in many ways beating their heads against the wall. That just happens to be because that's where they live. So, you know, the Republicans who live in areas that are more heavily Republican and more predominantly Republican than they continue to win elections, they're all thrilled with what, they're, what they've accomplished. But we do very little to support our brothers and sisters in areas where they really need our help. We're so focused on geography. People, you, you yeah. have to work where you live and you have to live where you work. God forbid you want to go help somebody in another county. Oh, like, who are you to come into my county? Like, what are you talking about? We need do to set the truth where the fight you, is. Do you think that the state Republican Party could do more to help Republicans in counties uh, that are not traditionally Republican to help them build say, a better organization? You say the state Republican Party, you mean New Jersey? Yeah, in New Jersey, yeah. There's there's a state Republican Party in New Jersey? <laughs> there hasn't well, been a state Republican Party in New Jersey since Tom Kane was governor. If there's a problem with, new, with Republicans winning in New Jersey, it's because the state Republican Party is non-functional and functionally non-existent. And, and yes, I said that, and that will get out, and there will be comments made on that. But the state, the New Jersey State Republican Party is non-functional and functionally non-existent. It, it has no power. It has, this goes back to the organization again. The organization is so courthouse centric. It's so driven by the county organizations that if you're a powerful Republican organization, you completely ignore the state party. And if you're and in, if you if you're a heavily Democrat county, the state party ignores you. So the state party has no real influence over anything, and certainly with with you know the Democrats have a solid control of both houses. They picked up seats last year. It's still mind boggling. The Democrats have solid control of both houses in the governor's mansion. So the Republican state party has no. And, and, and last no. year. The last round of statewide legislative elections, as we know, Joe, was supposed to be a year that the Republicans were supposed to pick up seats. Yeah. <coughs> and instead they lost seats. Yeah. What happened? Uh, well, I will say this about that. I'm pretty good at this, if I do say so myself. And it was not until election day I realized we were in trouble. Because what was unanticipated, what, what, what I didn't anticipate, and I know others did not anticipate, was the extremely low turnout. Mm -hmm. the, the, on election day, you could see it was, it was not a low turnout day. It was a no turnout day. And, the, just, and certainly our voters simply did not vote. Republicans did, simply did not come out and vote. The numbers, the Democrats' numbers were low. Our numbers were terrible. And what that said to me in, you know, in hindsight, I didn't see it coming in foresight, and I can speak to why we should do a better, how we could do a better job of, of seeing that coming. Because, it, it, you know, in every one of these events, you want to learn from what happened. But, you know, not seeing that coming, we sort of expected much better result. But if your people don't vote, you lose. You think that the uh, that obviously uh, the Republicans have to do a better job with the early voting and the meal in balance, don't they? Yeah, uh, you're, 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 of that. Did, did, did one of your viewers say here, if you want to tweak them, ask that question? Because I am, well, I'm always the contrarian, um, but I feel that that's an example of the party trying to follow the Democrats instead of embracing the strategy that works for us. Do we need to do a, do a better job of getting our people who uh, are, are signed up to vote by mail to vote by mail? 
Yes, we do. Uh, Cumberland County, yet again, was the highest return of Republicans in the state in terms of vote by mail. But the Democrats still outpolled us in the vote by mail. Our electorate simply doesn't want to vote by mail. So, so trying to get people who don't want to vote by mail to vote by mail is, is sort of the same mistake, I think, as trying to persuade Democrats that they should vote Republican instead of trying to persuade Republicans that they should vote. Okay. And, and I feel that our, 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 the biggest, I don't want to say mistake we're making, that's too strong, but I think the, the biggest development need that we have as a party is understanding what it's going to take to persuade our people to vote. The, the biggest mistake that continues to be made, and this is a mistake, and I watched it all of last year, and I just put my head in my hand because it just keeps happening. We take a poll. We identify likely voters. And if you're not a likely voter, we ignore you in the poll. So then we try to figure out how to persuade likely voters to vote Republican. And then we identify a body of voters called persuadable voters. And we want to focus our campaign on trying to persuade voters to vote Republican. Well, you, you listen to that and you say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is in a low turnout election like last year, we left 75% of our voters on the table because nobody bothered to ask the following question. If you're not likely to vote this year, what could we do to get you to vote? What would make you a likely voter? What would get you to sign up to vote by mail? What would get you? We sent out, we're, we're, we're going to do a better job of vote by mail. You started with this earlier. We send out vote by mail applications to people who vote at the polls every year. They vote at the polls every year. They don't want to vote by mail. And even if they do, like, they're not the people we should be trying to attract. We're trying to get Republicans to vote by mail. We want to get the ones who voted in 2020 but haven't voted since. We're, well, they're not likely voters. I know they're not likely voters. That's the point. We have to try to encourage them to, to, to vote. So I've always focused on the voters who are dismissed as not being likely voters for the same reason. Right? It's easier, more effective to get someone who's I would rather try to persuade somebody who's predisposed to vote for me to come out and vote than to try to persuade someone who's predisposed to vote against me to vote for me. Because all I've done in that conversation is antagonize them enough to make sure they come out and vote against me. So you think we need to do really do a more in-depth job and that we're forgetting a lot of people. We're just, we're not doing a careful enough job of voter analysis or potential voter analysis. I, I could I could not state it better than you just did. Our voter analysis is, 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 I think, sorely lacking, and we need to do a much better job of voter analysis. We should know on election day, before the polls close, whether we won or lost, because we should know who voted. And we should know before election day who's going to vote for us and who's not going to vote for us. And if we know who's going to vote for us and who's not going to vote for us, then we want to get out the people who are going to vote for us and ignore the people who aren't going to vote for us. It's our opponent's job to get those people out. Well, why are we doing our job, doing their job for them? Well, a high turnout favors Republicans. Only if it's Republicans that are voting. Right. Why so, do yeah. you think so few Republicans came out to vote the last time around? in an election that they were supposed to do well in New Jersey. What, I will, I will, I will. Why were they, they were, were they not motivated or what? Ding, 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 ding. I, I, I will, I will freely admit that I, like everybody else, was trying to Monday morning quarterback last year's election. But my analysis is quite simple. And I, 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 I could not have been more emphatic earlier when you mentioned the state Republican Party. I truly believe that in a state election, because let's 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 look at the four-year cycle, right? I'm going to state the obvious for a minute, but but it's to show a point, in the 2020 election, this is the typical four-year cycle. The 2020 election is a presidential election. Everybody votes in a presidential election, and the presidential politics drive the results. 2021 is a gubernatorial election. People aren't as aren't as jazzed about the gubernatorial election as they are about the presidential election, but the gubernatorial election gets everybody's attention. Right. It gets a lot of people's attention. Yeah. It gets a lot of people's attention because people love to vote for their executive. Now the next two cycles kick in. 
Now you have the federal election, but it's a federal midterm. So maybe there's a U.S. senator at the top of the ticket, or maybe not. Maybe it's just House. Well, we have a U.S. Senate election, certainly in New Jersey, right? Nobody pays that much attention to a U.S. Senate election. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, Democrats are going to win the U.S. Senate election in New Jersey, and everybody goes, okay. And that's it. Republicans haven't fielded you know, a really good candidate since probably since Christy Whitman. So that doesn't even generate a lot of enthusiasm. When it comes down to a House race at the top of the ticket, in most congressional districts, the incumbent's a lock. So there's no reason to come out and vote. Now, I always say when I'm de- I'm always dealing with county commissioner candidates these days, I tell them frankly, and I, I say this because I was the equivalent of a county commissioner myself as a freeholder. Right. Well, you did freeholder then, but you were commissioner. Yeah. Right, right. So, and, and frankly, I always thought commissioner was a better name, not for the reasons they changed it, but I always thought it made more sense. You go outside of the state and you say, I'm a freeholder. Like, what's that? I'm like, that's a county commissioner. So, but the, 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 um, uh, uh, now I got I got sidetracked on. Oh, I always tell the candidates that no one in the history of the world ever woke up on election day and said, "I wasn't going to vote today, but you know what? I got to get out there and vote for those county commissioners." Like no <laughs> one goes out and votes for the county commissioners. <laughs> Elections are driven, right? Now you've been around long enough to laugh at that because you know it's true. And and so elections are driven by the top of the ballot and the bottom right. of the ballot. You know, often if there's a, a, a and, an and most, municipal people, race. most people don't even know who their state legislators are. But that brings me, you'll notice I left off the fourth year of the four year cycle, which was last year. The top of the tickets, the state legislator. And that's exactly right. No one even knows who their state legislators are. Yeah. I mean, I know state legislators love to think that everybody knows and cares that they're state legislators, but for the most part, people don't know or care who their state legislatures are, legislators are. And again, we take these polls of likely voters. Well, if you're likely to vote in a legislative year, you're more likely to know who your state legislator is. Take a poll of all registered voters and see what kind of results you get. You're going to find out nobody knows who their state legislator is. No. Right? So, no, so that have, even legislators who have tremendously high name recognition in an off year where only people voting are the people that pay attention to these things. But that's what happens last year. State legislatures at the top of the ticket. It was another Murphy midterm, if you will, but Murphy's not got the negative attention that he had, you know, four years well, ago. But this is, yeah, and this is... Um that New Jersey has this weird rule. I think it's one of only two or three states. Another one is Virginia, that they hold their statewide legislative and gubernatorial elections on what is called the off years. So they hold them during years that there are no national elections. So that tends to favor the incumbent party, the people who hold the power, because they they get their people out. The machine gets their people out. It's an insider's sort of election it, where people don't even know about it. They're not even aware about they it. They don't care about it. That, they don't care about they it. They don't care about it. And, and so you, you, you're, 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 you're wise to identify. You know, it's New Jersey and Virginia. You're correct. And, and you're wise to identify that what we've done in this state and in Virginia is separate the federal elections from the state elections. But that dichotomy also exposes why last year was such a disaster for our party. And you're right, the incum- there's the power of the incumbency, they have the money, they have the machinery, they have the patronage, they have all the things that it takes to crank out their vote in a low turnout election. But why is it such a low turnout election? Because nobody cares about the state legislature. Mm-hmm. They simply don't. Nobody cares what the state legislature is doing unless it affects them directly. But for the most part, people simply don't care. And it's and that brings us back to it's our job as Republicans to point out to them why they should care. Make them care. Ask them what would make them care. You know, are we or should we maybe take a poll of that? I, I, I alluded to that earlier. If you're unlikely to vote this year, why why aren't you voting? All politicians are the same. Okay, then you're then why vote at all, right? So, but we can show you the difference. Not if we continue to chase after the Democrats and behave like Democrats and say, oh, the Democrats are winning on this issue, so we ought to 
probably move to the well, left. Well, to be a left. party that's for, the, you know, for the same, only lighter, you know, would be like Democrat light. Yeah, right. And you and I have had this discussion. Before. A choice, you know, what President Reagan said. Reagan, right. We need to we need to paint in bold colors. Right. If, right. Exactly. If we don't paint in bold colors, people won't know the difference between us and them. Right. Right. Exactly. And Senator Testa says it all the time. You, you don't beat vanilla with French vanilla. I mean, you need to give people a meaningful uh, uh, choice, uh, two different options. And I, I this is another I mean, I. I I don't want to be too hard on the party, right? Because then it's like, okay, well, who are you to tell us how to run our party? But the, at the end of the day, the the, the party, I, I, I've seen it all my political career, which you, you didn't want to mention the number earlier, but I'm coming up on 40 years of this. And, and after 40 years, I've seen us win and I've seen us lose and I've seen us lose some more and then I've seen us win. And it's always the same thing. When we have the courage to stand up and present ourselves as a viable alternative that will be better than our opponents, we win elections. And now I'm going to take another shot at the state party. The state party sits around, the hangers on, they sit around and sit around and sit around until the people are fed up with the Democrats enough to vote Republican. Then they all jump in like they did something and won an election. And then eventually things go back to the Democrats because the Republicans didn't really win. The people just got fed up enough to send the Democrats a message. And once they got the message, Republicans don't last very long because they're not voting for the Republicans statewide. They might vote for Republicans in certain areas, but they're not voting for the Republicans statewide. They're voting against the Democrats from time to time. The okay. Republican Party would have recognized that in New Jersey. I'm just looking at the figures from New Hampshire. There's about a quarter of the votes in. Yeah. Waker, just are. being updated. 25% of the votes in. <laughs> it's now 52-46. It's been holding That's with 60. a six-point spread. Now, right. Joe, um, I don't think six points, considering what the polls showed, I think if Nikki Haley keeps this thing within single digits, she's going to declare a victory tonight, Joe. What do you think? I think, well, I think she will. I think she should. Uh, declare a victory. It, it's it. Uh, I'm looking for. I saw something. And of course, Trump's projected to win now by both CNN and Fox News. Like big yes. surprise there, with 18 percent of the vote in. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 if she keeps it to single digits, she should project that as a victory. I was looking here for an article that I saw just before we got on. I can't find it quickly, so I'm I'm going to focus back on, on on you and not on trying to find this article. But the nature of the article. Was, was comparing the New Hampshire voter to the Iowa voter, the New Hampshire Republican to the, to, no, I have to say the New Hampshire voter to the Iowa Republican, because in the New Hampshire primary, a lot of independents or what the, you know, uh, unaffiliated uh, voters end up voting as well. And so um, where yes. it really compared the two states was that the Republicans in Iowa are much more conservative um, a much higher percentage of evangelical Christians who go for Trump by big numbers, um, much more MAGA willing to admit that they're, they're, they're MAGA Republicans, where New Hampshire right. Republicans, not so much. And so it's kind of not surprising that Nikki Haley, who at this point now, and, and let me let me make a, just a quick comment about Nikki Haley. Um, two years ago, I would have given anything to see Nikki Haley run for president on our party's banner. And if Nikki Haley gets the nomination this year, I will be just thrilled to death because Nikki Haley should be our president. I will exactly. support her as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we absolutely. Nikki, Nikki Haley. So I, I have nothing negative to say about Nikki Haley. Um, I don't think she can get the nomination in the end. I think Donald Trump has it locked up. Uh, but I'm happy to see, and this is where I say she should declare victory. I'm happy to see that what we're, well, well I'm happy to see what we're seeing. Uh, at the risk of being redundant. Uh, Nikki Haley is the only one left. So all of the non-Trump vote in the party is going to go to Nikki Haley. We're learning from New Hampshire tonight, and a long way to go before this is over, but we're learning from New Hampshire tonight, and I think we will learn from continued primaries what true percentage of Republican insiders, right? Republican primary voters are the insiders of the insiders, right? So, so we're learning 
what percentage of the insiders have become disenchanted with Donald Trump as our presidential nominee? Right. And, and that information, if it's channeled positively, can ensure a victory for our party in November. If, it, if it's allowed to become divisive, then the game could be over. And this is where we don't have any better national leadership than we have state leadership. There's no national Republican Party. So there's no national leadership. It's Trump and everybody else. And the majority of Republican well, primary he's, voters. Are, he's such a huge personage. He's such yeah. a huge persona. Right, you know, right. He takes all the oxygen out of the room. It's now 7% spread. Yeah. And I see that the New York Times estimates at this point that Trump will win by 11%. That would be a double-digit win. That would be at now, least in my mind, a double-digit win would be significant. But if she keeps it to single digits, then she's going to have bragging rights. You agree? Uh, almost. I agree that if she keeps it to single digits, she's got bragging rights. If she keeps it to single digits, I would declare victory. Right? She's not going to declare a, a delegate victory, but she's going to declare a victory for her right. But would it be out if it's 11%? And that, that's where I push back slightly because I don't think 11% is enough. Okay. I, think, I think Trump's got to win New Hampshire by 20%. Oh, I don't think that's going to happen. Joe. I don't think that's going to happen, which means, and, and I, I guess I didn't finish the thought. He's got to win New Hampshire by 20% to put an end to her. Okay. He's not going to win by 20%. Uh, very unlikely, right? At this point, it looks like he's not going to win by 20%. No one predicted he would win by 20%, which means Nikki Haley's going to be around. Nikki Haley is okay. not going to drop out of this race, 11%, 12%, 15% even. Nikki Haley is not dropping out of this race. And that will embolden her, especially going into South Carolina, right? That will embolden her because she could win South Carolina. Well, some people say she can. Some people say she can't. I mean. Uh, I didn't say can or can't. I said could. <laughs> yeah, she could she win could South Carolina. Win. But she's not going anywhere if she stays within 15 points. Now let's look at New Jersey and this is, we're still at 25% of the votes in, in New yeah. Hampshire. So we've got three quarters of the way to go. Uh, New Jersey, the night that he lost to Phil Murphy and that was an excruciating loss. It was such a, I was so, so disappointed when Jack Chitterelli lost. Yep. At the very night, or the, the oh, and let's say uh, the, he waited a few days and then he conceded. And then when he, on, on the day that he conceded, he announced he was running again in 2025. Right. You think it was a good idea that uh, to announce right after you were defeated that you're going to run again? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was okay. a real, I think it was a real good idea for Jack Chitterelli's campaign. Okay. Right. And, and I, I want to be clear when I, when I say that, uh, what I mean when I say that is, is that Jack made it clear. I'm not, I'm, I might be down, but I'm not out. That's uh -huh. the kind of fighter I am. That's the kind of leader I am. And I'm not just going to come back three years from now and throw my name into the primary. I, I'm, I'm going to keep fighting. And he has, he's been all over New Jersey for the past three years. I'm going to keep fighting for New Jersey. I'm going to keep fighting for the cause of the Republican Party. I'm going to keep fighting for the people. And I'm going to keep my name out there. And I'd really kind of like it if everybody would get behind me and we can run for governor for four whole years instead of running for governor for four months in 2025. So do I think it was a good idea? Yeah. Some folks in the in the real inside were like, wait a minute, this this this, this, this guy just got beat. He's running around like he's he's well. Yeah, there's there's that, but wh wh what are you really complaining about when you say that he's not giving anybody else a chance to run? You want to run, run. There are others that are throwing their name in the in the ring here to run against them. Why? I don't know. They're trying to make names for themselves, maybe. I don't know. But, but Jack has basically been running ever since the end of the last election, and as you and I know, he has been. Everywhere. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to push back on that statement a little bit. Jack's been running since two years before the last election, right? So, so, so he's been running for. He's already been running for four and a half years. So, so, um, and, and nobody's out there working harder. I don't know how he has the energy. He's everywhere all the time. 
but 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 yeah, if, if I wanted to be governor and let there be no mistake about it, you couldn't pay me enough money to be governor. But if, if, if I wanted to be governor, I'm what else do you have to do between gubernatorial elections except run for governor? See, that's one advantage that Jack has in that he's he doesn't have a business that he really has to run anymore. And I guess I shouldn't say that. I don't know what he does as far as the business goes. So I'm kind of talking out of school there a little bit. But he he, he certainly has the time and the resources to, to campaign the, the way that he does. That that That's clear. And he, he, he's not holding an existing public office, which some people right. see, right, as a, a, a detra- not a, 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 what am I trying to say? That, that That's not that's not so great for him. That he doesn't. Uh, well, why? So our sitting legislators, executives, county officers, anybody else that wants to run, they're busy doing what it is that they're doing and they're focused and committed to and, and duty bound, frankly, to to, 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 to to honor their commitments to their offices where Jack doesn't have that. He doesn't have to be in Trenton fighting with the Democrats every week. He can just take shots at Governor Murphy and run around the state and carry the favor of the Republicans that are going to he'll, he'll he'll get the column and probably he got the column like every the count every county in the state last time. Now, don't you think don't you think Bramnick, Senator Bramnick would be formidable if he chooses to run? I mean what I hear is Bramnick is going to announce very, very soon. Yeah. Uh, I heard he was going to announce uh in a few days, like on the twenty seventh. Yeah, I, I I don't know when he'll announce, if he'll announce. It's, they say he's going to announce. Would he be formidable? John Bramnick knows what he's doing. He'll, he'll, he'll put together a real campaign. Will he be able to pull? So here's the other thing. We still have the column vote. I know there are people who don't like the column vote. I'm a big believer. I wouldn't even have a primary election. I'm so far the other extreme when it comes to our party selecting candidates. But, but Bram, Bramnick is not not going to pull the columns away from Chitterelli in very many counties. And we, we, I have to tell people that are, are listening, they're going to are going to watch this because we're recording this and I'm going to, although it's not live on Facebook tonight, I'm going to put it on Facebook. I'm going to put it on LinkedIn. I'm going to put it on my blog. When Joe is talking about the column, he's talking about the, organization line in the counties, which is very important in New Jersey to get the Republican organization line under the, under the title regular Republican organization to be the Republican nominee in that County. Right. The candidates that are endorsed by the County organization in that County. Right. 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 And, and that's very, very important in New Jersey and that really is like a huge part of getting the nomination in New Jersey. So Absolutely. you've got to go around to these individual counties, 21 different counties, and get what they call the line. That's right. And each each county ha- in general has a different mechanism by which the line or the county endorsement is awarded. Everywhere mm-hmm. from the county chair has the power to select to we have a full-blown convention by delegation by proportion in a pr- secret ballot right. and that you know so right. it, it's all over the map every county does its own thing <laughs> it's, so, it's, a, it's a patchwork it well absolutely it is but each county does what it does and if you want to run for governor you might you, you better well know how each county runs its convention and how each county awards the and line jack and- has been around this block he knows yes. these counties He's That's been right. in every county. Uh, he's been in every little town, every right. town, every crevice of New Jersey. I mean, it's just the man, I don't know how he does it, I don't, the, the fortitude that it must take. But he knows the mechanism and he knows the counties and, That's right. and the people and the Republican rank and file voters know him. Right. Know Absolutely. Him. Absolutely. So let's 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 this is this is a political theory discussion, not so much a Jack Chitterelli discussion at this point, but I can't help myself. Part of the reason that people who don't like the county endorsements don't like the county endorsements is because if you think about it, there are 21 people in this state of what, nine million? What's New Jersey have these days? Nine million people, I think. There are 21 people in the state of New Jersey who theoretically get to decide who our candidate for governor is. And those are the 21 county chairs. 
because if you're a county chair and you're running your county, whatever convention style you have, one would expect you to deliver the party line for the candidate that you want to endorse. So if oh, I'm running for governor, I need to know that these 21 folks are on my side. Now, a county chair who wants to be a tyrant, especially in a county that isn't completely controlled by Republicans, isn't going to last long as county chair. So, of course, the county chair has to get the support of you know, their own parliament or their own county committee members, their own screening committee, however they however they do it, their own delegates to their convention. So they do need to have the support of the rank and file for their selection. And that's, again, where Jack's an absolute master. He gets the support of the rank and file Republicans in all of those towns and people that they, they love them and they're not their county chair who wants to give the line to somebody else is going to be met with resistance from you know, the folks in, the, in their own organization. County chairs are very, very powerful yeah. in New Jersey. Every state is different. That's yeah. the way our federal system works. Thank God. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful system. The oh, fact sure. that we don't have that the national elections are not centrally controlled by some central body right. is very important that the elections are run by the states and the counties is a very important part, thank God, the founders, the, what they created of our federal system. Uh, yeah, and you, you, and, you and I are completely agreed on that. Completely agreed yeah. on that. And um, yeah. I will continue to fight to my dying breath to preserve the, the 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 loose confederation of independent and sovereign states that this nation is absolutely absolutely now it looks it's 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 running at about eight percent now and now the New York Times projects that Trump will win by twelve percent mm -hmm. so that's what it's going to be so if he wins by twelve percent yes there had been some polls saying he was 20 23 24 yeah. percent ahead. But there had also been some polls saying that it was like in, well, there maybe were one or two polls that said it was in single digits. So this would be somewhere in the middle. But you're right. Uh, I still think even if it's 12 percent yeah. that she's going to have some bragging rights and she's going to go on to South Carolina. Right. And so maybe maybe we, we have we've created a trichotomy where if. If, 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 if the president smokes her uh, at 20 percent or more, uh, maybe the governor decides to bow out. If the governor is within single digits, she's going to declare that a victory. And anywhere in between, um, Nikki Haley's staying in this race uh, and, and, and you know, yeah. President Trump's going to have his hands full for a little while. Only eight percent of the votes are in now. I say it's like eight percent right now. And let me ask you this, Joe, as we conclude this, because I want to wrap this up and want to remind everybody, if you can not see this on Facebook now, it's going to be on Facebook. I'm going to arrange it. Don't worry about it. Um, it has been live on Twitter. Um, what do you think about a Trump Haley ticket, Joe? Well, I'm happy and thrilled that you would close with that question, because one point that I was was contemplating making that now I'll make is that I surely hope now, President Trump doesn't call me for my advice, but maybe he'll be watching your show later. So maybe he'll, he'll get to hear this. But 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 <laughs> I hope he does not go down the path of trashing her as he has done with his opponents in the past, because mm -hmm. I think that Nikki Haley, as I said earlier in this program, should be our president. If it's not going to be in this cycle, I would like to think that she's using this cycle to get her name and her organization out there for the next cycle. Uh, and a vice president, Haley, would be a wonderful combination uh, if, if she would be willing to do that and if the president would be willing to do that. I think that Governor Haley brings the wing of the party that isn't completely Trumpish um, mm -hmm. back in, in November and gives us the opportunity to to start to prop her up for her eventual run for president as a vice president rather than as a used to be governor from South Carolina. I think it's a hell of a ticket. And let's face it, whoever the vice presidential nominee is, Joe, this is going to be unique because that person is gets the, the jump, the leg up on the presidency in four years. 
I'll okay, throw, not I'll, eight years, four years. Four years, right? I'll throw. You only serve one term, right? I'll, I'll, I'll throw. Well, it, 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 this is where age comes in because President Trump could. Just, I, it's not. It's not, neither above him before, nor beneath him to resign after two years so he can run again for four. But that 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 that's real. That that's real chess game. There. Uh, but but I would close with if not Governor Haley, then who? Who else does the Republican yeah. Party have to make a meaningful vice presidential candidate? Well, that could bring that could bring something to the ticket that would unite the party. And I think it Better would scare, Nikki Haley? I, Yeah, and I think it would scare the hell out of the Democrats if you had a Trump Haley ticket. I think it would scare the hell out of them. The only candidate I could think of better than Nikki Haley would be Kristen Sinema. And I don't know that Kristen Sinema is ready to get on a ticket with Donald Trump. Yeah. That, so, so I, she's I, an independent now. Well, that, so right. So you see what happened. How long she lasted as a Democrat? You see how long she lasted as a Democrat. So, but I don't think for a minute that that ticket could possibly form. It would probably implode quicker if it formed. Governor Haley can hold her own against anybody, so she can certainly well, hold her she's, own. No, she's very, now she's very, she's very adept. She's very adept. Wonderful. She's very clever. She's very good on her feet. Yeah. She staked out some very good positions, um, and I think um, I think you're right that Trump should uh, he should not trash her tonight, no matter what happens. Right. He should. He should, he should, you know, he should keep record. line of communication open with her. Keep lines of communication open. Don't right. rule out anybody for vice president, including her. Right. I wouldn't rule out anybody because you don't know what the landscape is going to be. Right. Unlike but, eight, eight years ago where he had to get rid of his competition in the Republican field, he does not have to do that this time. Right. What he should be doing is running on his record, which despite the left-wing press was stellar in, in, in many ways. Right. And, and he, he should be trashing the Biden administration for all of its failures and pointing out what we all know. Exactly. Joe Biden's a shill for a Kamala Harris presidency. And if, if the Republicans don't run on that, call it what it is. Joe Biden is a shill for a Kamala Harris presidency, but they know she can't win. So they would rather end run the system than put it to the public vote. Yeah. And how likely is it that Biden will even serve out the four years of his term if he's reelected, Joe? I don't, I'm not sure he'll serve out the day after he's sworn in. <laughs> this idea that Joe Biden's running for re-election because he's going to serve another four years is a joke. I mean, you really have to be out of touch to think that this is anything other than a, than, than a cover for a Kamala Harris presidency, but the Democrats don't have the integrity to actually run her because they know she won't win. You said it all right there. You said it all right there. And thank you, Joe. It's been great, as always, chatting with yeah. you. We're going to do this again. I hope we do, Dan. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy talking to you. Uh, stay well, my old friend. And if, you, if uh, you, you ever want to talk to me again, you know where to find me. Absolutely. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks, everybody. And like I said, this will be on Facebook. It'll be on my YouTube channel. It'll be on my blog at dancerucci.com. And everybody will be able to watch it. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Dan. Yeah. <laughs>